What is up guys and welcome back to the mini cut series which is unfortunately coming to an end today because it is the last day of the mini cut and uh, I'm actually recording this after my workout because I forgot to plug in my microphone during uh, I guess this morning's car session so unfortunately uh, I've already done the workout so I know how it went I weighed in at 186 point something I kind of forgot I'll put a picture on the screen but it is actually February 4th as you can see now the goal was to end the mini cut on January 31st obviously just that one month of mini cutting but I hadn't quite reached my 185 goal which means by tomorrow since today you know is still technically part of the mini cut by tomorrow I'll be somewhere in the 185s which means I'll be close enough to my goal where I can just start bulking plus it's a it was a pull day today which means tomorrow's a rest day I can carb up tomorrow start the bulk uh, nice and fresh for my next push day I lost almost 20 pounds in that month. I was very consistent, didn't really do any cheat meals or not any cheat meals at all, no cheat snacks. I just eat pretty much the same thing every day. I'm a pretty disciplined person, so honestly, it wasn't really that difficult. But uh, yeah, let's, I guess, enjoy the workout for another one of these mic'd up gym vlog sessions. If you guys are enjoying them, uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I guess let's just get to the workout. Yeah. There will be no mic'd up session, as you can quite clearly see, because my dumbass thought it'd be a good idea to plug the microphone into my phone, which was on my tripod 10 feet away from me, instead of on my shirt. So, uh, yeah, as you can see from the title of the video, I am going to use this opportunity to explain to you guys, you know, what I was talking about during my workout, which is how to grow a well-developed, thick, juicy back to impress... I guess yourself because no one else really cares. But real quick, I do just want to say, I mean, take a look at the drip here. I mean, just admire the drip that's going on right here. We've got the Death Note Ryuk shirt, the white My Protein shorts, the white shoes, white socks. I mean, I did want to make sure that I, I mentioned the drip because, you know, I was drippy. But anyway, getting right into how to grow a big back, the first thing you want to do is understand the muscles of the back at play and how to train them correctly. So to do that, you want to break down your back into three different components, your upper back, your lats, and your rear delts. Now, your upper back consists mainly of your traps and rhomboids, your lats, you know, are your lats, and your rear delts, well, you know, you, you, so when you look at all the different exercises for your back, everything you can do, you know, your vertical pull downs, your seated rows, your barbell rows, you can really just break everything down into three groups. You've got your rows, obviously, you know, barbell rows, seated rows, chest supported rows, any sort of variation where you're rowing, like, you know, you're rowing a boat, that's, you know, obviously what a row is, and then you've got your pull downs, which, you know, vertical pull downs, if you got, like, the overhead head bar or you know something with your arm in front of you and you pull it down towards your hip those are obviously pull downs and then the last variation is the pull over something like a cable or if you have a machine pull over those are pretty much the only three exercises you can do for your back any sort of back exercise is going to be one of those three things either a row whether or not you do it with a dumbbell a barbell a cable or a machine and then if you pull it down that's a pull down. If you do some sort of pullover, that's a pullover. When it comes to training back most effectively, I would argue you should really only be focusing on rowing and pull downs. Pullovers are okay, but you actually get a lot of chest involvement during the upper range of motion of the movement. And in my opinion, pull downs and rows are just going to be better, right? I mean, sure, if you love doing some sort of pullover variation, then I mean, by all means, throw it in. But rows and pull downs will target all parts of your back anyway. If you have both of those in, there's really no point in doing a pull down. So now that we got the exercises out of the way, you know, obviously pull down and rows, I wanted to quickly talk about how to actually bias the different portions of your back by doing those two exercises. So when it comes to your upper back, which are your traps and rhomboids, obviously, you want to focus on scapular retraction and protraction, which is why when you see me doing those T-bar rows, you'll notice that I'm getting a big stretch at the bottom and I'm driving my elbows behind my body and retracting my scapula. And what that means is I'm focusing on shoulder blade movement. I'm pushing my shoulder blades forward at the bottom and then I'm pinching them together at the end to move those shoulder blades out and in and that's what retracting and protracting your scapula is and that is how you bias the upper back if you want those traps and rhomboids to work you need those shoulder blades moving you know think of reaching as far out as you can pushing those shoulder blades apart really get that stretch and then on the way up you want to drive your elbows as far back as you possibly can and then pinch your shoulder blades together almost like you're you know trying to keep a coin right in the middle of your back now you've probably heard a lot of people say that you know in order to bias your upper back you want a large degree of elbow flare you know the, the further you put out your elbows the more bias you can get on your upper back which is true right if you have some sort of machine where you can use a pronated grip you're gonna keep your elbows a little bit more flared out and therefore you can bias less of the lats and you can work 
work more of the traps and rhomboids. Now, it's not going to be as important as, you know, making sure you retract and protract your scapula, but if you can flare your elbows a little bit more outwards, your lats are doing less of the work. The three things I would say for your upper back are number one, focus on retraction and protraction. Number two, if possible, use a pronated grip or at least don't use such a narrow grip where, you know, you're keeping your elbows super tucked in because as I'll mention when I talk about lats, that will bias the lats a little bit more. And then number three, large range of motion. Then when it comes to the lats, you want to do the exact opposite of what I just said. So instead of using a large range of motion, number one, you want to use a small range of motion. Number two, instead of using a lot of shoulder blade movement, you want to keep your shoulders locked in place. And number three, instead of using a pronated grip with a lot of elbow flare, you want to use a neutral grip with very, very little elbow flare, keeping your elbows as far tucked into your body as possible. So during those lat pull downs that I do during this workout, it's not really a lat exercise, mainly because I'm tilting so far back and I'm driving my elbows behind my body where I get a lot of trap and rhomboid involvement. It's more of just an overall back developer. It's not really biasing, you know, one muscle or the next. But if you've ever seen me do, you know, lat pull downs with one arm at a time, you'll notice that I'm doing all of the, oh man. I guess give me five minutes to charge my light. So I'll put a video on the screen right now of me doing some single arm lat pull downs. Now this is going to be a very lat biased movement because of three things. Number one, I'm keeping a neutral spine. When you keep a neutral spine, you're not going to get any shoulder blade movement. And when you don't get any shoulder blade movement, you're not going to be able to work your traps and rhomboids. So the first thing I do is I drop my shoulder into place. What that does is it places all the tension on your lats because you're no longer protracting your scapula. You're not going to get any shoulder blade movement forward, which means your lats are going to be able to keep tension the entire time. And the second thing is I'm using a small range of motion. As you can see at the bottom, I'm focusing on driving my elbow to my hip and not moving it any further. If you're doing an upper back movement, you want to focus on pulling your elbow behind your body, whereas your lats, you want a small range of motion. You don't want to move your elbow behind your body because that's going to retract your scapula. And what does that do? It biases your traps and rhomboids. The last thing I'm doing is I'm keeping a neutral grip. As you can see, I'm not pronating. I'm not moving my hand, you know, outwards and getting a larger stretch because that is obviously, again, going to push your elbow into more of a flared out position which is going to disadvantage the lats and therefore place a little bit more emphasis on your traps and rhomboids. And this exact same logic also applies to rows. Do not push your shoulder blade forward, keep the tension, and then drive your elbow down towards your hip and do not pull it any further. So when it comes to the lats, you want to focus on those three things. Number one, a neutral spine, no shoulder blade movement. Number two, a small range of motion. Do not pull your elbow behind your body. And finally, number three, using that neutral grip as opposed to something like a pronated grip or even a supinated grip, because then you just get a lot of bicep involvement, you know, for no real reason. So we got the upper back, we got the lats, and then finally, last but not least, is the rear delts. This is a very, very simple muscle to train. Number one, because they already get so much stimulus from your rowing movements that you don't really need a ton of additional exercises for them. You know, two exercises per week is plenty, but when it comes to exercise selection, you really only got one choice, and that is a fly variation, whether or not you want to do that on a cable or something like a pec deck fly machine, you know, where you can focus on shoulder extension and driving your shoulder, you know, behind your body. That's really all you can really do. Now, as you can see with this rear delt fly, I am leaning 45 degrees forward in order to, you know, make my arm path a 45 degree angle. You know, if I were doing this on a cable, you'd usually see me pull out the cables in somewhat of a 45 degree angle. That's not necessarily going to bias the rear delts anymore, but it is going to disadvantage your traps because your elbows aren't going to be super flared out. Now, a lot of people and something that I believed in personally, when you get this 45 degree elbow flare, your rear delts are going to be more aligned, which, you know, then biases them more. But the rear delts, you know, if you move your shoulder, your rear delt fiber orientation is going to move as well. So whether or not you pull at a 45 degree angle or you pull straight out to the side, it's not going to line up any differently, but it will disadvantage the traps because you're not getting a lot of elbow flare. Whether or not you want to do this tilt or perform the exercise normally as seated, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. It's kind of personal preference, but this is how I like to do it. I feel my rear delts, you know, fine like this and Let's be honest, my rear delts are pretty big, so it's working. But yeah, that is it for the three different muscle groups. And there goes my light again. I just, I don't care at this point. And that pretty much is it for the three different components of your back and how to target them. A couple additional notes that I want to say in order to grow your back most effectively. Number one, utilize lifting straps. If you are not using lifting straps, you are not going to be able to take your back to failure. Your back is a lot stronger than your forearms. And a lot of these exercises are so heavy that you're just going to be using a lot of grip and your forearms are going to fatigue before your back. And if your forearms fatigue before 
for your back, then you're not really taking your back to failure, right? You always want to utilize straps, even if it's something, you know, like a pull down, even if it limits you just slightly, you probably could have done more reps if you were to use straps where it, it is going to make, you know, somewhat of a difference. And the second thing I want to say is use chest support when available. As opposed to doing something like a barbell row where there's absolutely no chest support, a seated row is always going to be a more effective option because you now actually have something to brace against to generate as much force as possible. The last thing I want to do is just tell you guys how to put all that knowledge into an actual program and how to structure that program in order to make the most gains possible. Now, I would always recommend training your back twice a week just because it's a lot more convenient to do three back exercises on two days. Therefore, you can, you know, you train with a little bit more diversity and have some variation in your routine as opposed to doing everything in one day and then not being able to train it again for like another week. Whether or not you want to train that with chest, shoulders, biceps, triceps, it doesn't really matter. But on one day, you want to do two lat focused exercises and one upper back. And then your next day, do two upper back focused exercises and one lat. Now, obviously it doesn't really have to be that perfect. You know, if you saw that lat pull down I was doing during this workout, it wasn't really lat focused. It wasn't really upper back focused. You could see I was driving my elbows in, but I was also kind of bringing them back. You know, not everything has to be purely for the upper back or purely for the lats. You know, even if you get, you know, a little bit of both, that's, you know, totally fine. And then when it comes to volume, number one, I would say always train to failure or very, very close to failure at most one rep left in the tank. And when you're doing those upper back exercises, I always find it beneficial to include some partials at the end to really juice out the length and position. I wouldn't do anything more than like 10 for your back. And I wouldn't really do anything less than four. Somewhere in that rep range is going to be good. But you know, as long as you're training to failure, you're going to be fine. I personally do five sets per workout on both of my back days. So, you know, if I do two upper back exercises and one lat, I'm going to do three sets during those upper back movements and two for my lat. So one of those exercises will be for one set and the other two will be for two sets. Five sets total for each workout, which is 10 sets per week. If you focus on these different variables, you train hard, your back is going to grow. But yeah, that is it for the back. Hopefully you guys learned something. And uh, yeah, let's get to some posing with a couple of my friends. Quick pose session with a couple of my boys, Frank and Shane. What would you do today? Hey, arms. Arms. Obviously, you got the back. I did some push-ups with the pump, but uh, I saw the Death Note. You guys, you guys in the anime? I used to. Have you ever seen it. Death Note? I, I saw the first like season. I've never watched anime. Really? Never, never really. Yeah, got this, this is a good yeah. show. That's, my favorite show. <laughs> That's it. I'm not showing my stomach. Dude, this man's huge. This man's <laughs> fucking squats 500 pounds. How old are you, Tom? 16. 16, bro. Bro, fucking squats 500. 500 pounds. <laughs> Honestly, the, the, the mini, the mini cut, the mini cut went well. I think I got pretty lean. Yeah. Oh, you. It's it's the it's the bicep plus the tricep pump yeah. bring them together. <laughs> the, the same short pose? <laughs> Wait, I, I didn't even do that. Alright. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the workout, bro. But uh, as always, if you guys enjoy these videos, uh, make sure to like, comment something. I don't know. Eventually, I'll make a video where I read a bunch of comments and, you know, do those question and answer type things. So, um, yeah, feel free to comment whatever you want. Subscribe. Uh, and, yeah, everything that YouTubers tell you to do, do that because, I don't know, man. Uh, but, yeah, that is it for the session. Let's get home and finish off the mini cut so that I can I can go back to bulking and get fat. I don't know. I guess see you guys.